Part two, sorry for the wait. So I left off last time with the oak beams cut roughly into shape. They sit into these turntables that spin around each other, allowing you to steer the front axle of the shepherd's hut. They're made from cast iron and so are poured liquid hot into a mould, but to help release them from the mould once they've cooled down, the sides aren't actually a 90 degree right angle, but are instead 88 degrees so as not to get stuck when pulling them out. But because I cut the oak beams perfectly square, or close enough, I now need to fill these voids with some very large 175mm wide tapered oak shims. So I'm going to try something. I don't know if it'll work, but this saw, like most saws, has a, an adjustable table so you can set an angle. So I'm going to set it two degrees off 90 and then I'm going to cut up one of the beams that I couldn't use and we'll see if that works. Technically it has worked, but I don't love it. I didn't capture it very well on video, but the problem with the shims here was inconsistency. Running them over the surface of freehand was causing them to come up at different thicknesses because they were quite light, so they were bouncing. I needed a way to keep them completely fixed and stable going through the machine, so I tried a different approach, which was to create a sort of bed for them to lie on.
It was nearly 40 degrees centigrade during this week in August and even though these beams are seasoned oak and therefore quite dry and stable, I noticed the intense heat was forcing these micro cracks to open up on the freshly cut end grain. To try and lock the remaining moisture inside, I rubbed wax onto the ends. With the shims a success, I could start the next challenge, drilling holes, big ones. This kingpin, which is made from the same solid steel stock as the axles, runs through both beams and turntables and aligns everything centrally. The challenge wasn't drilling a hole per se, but drilling a hole perfectly vertical or plumb, freehand through 175mm thick seasoned oak and doing it twice. For clarity, this is a drawing of the kingpin in blue. The two beams are in orange and the turntables are in black. So there were two hole sizes, a 28 mm hole, which goes all the way through both beams and a slightly larger but shallower 50 mm hole on three of the four faces.
Making that template guide for the 50mm drill bit had worked extremely well, so I thought I'd try the same but with a larger block of wood to help keep the much longer 28mm drill bit perfectly vertical. And I'd bought two different 28mm drill bits because I wasn't sure which one would work best, but as you'll see there was quite a clear winner. I can confirm it is very sharp. I don't think this is a straight hole. So I am changing plan once again. So I hadn't drilled the hole perfectly straight through that bigger block of wood, so I just reverted back to this board to use as my guide instead. And I set up the laser levels which gave me two visible lines to aim for. You may be surprised by the effort I'm going to with these holes, but just stick around and you'll see. I'm not having a good time with this drill bit. I think it's uh, the wrong kind for seasoned oak because it's only got one spiral, one helix. It's always drawing in into one point of the cutter, which means that it's quite unstable as you're going down and it's hard to keep straight. Whereas this one has two helixes, so I think it will be more stable as I'm going down. Looks pretty good. 48 from this side, 48 from that side. So this beam is this beam 
and I've drilled the 28 mil hole all the way through and the 50 mil hole 30 mil deep. This beam is this beam and again I've drilled the 28 mil hole all the way through and the 50 mil hole which is only 10 mil deep. So I've got to flip this over now and drill the last 50 mil hole which is going to be 34 mil deep and then I'm done. The reason I was so happy about drilling that hole straight is actually because I'd messed one up already. Drilling this beam had not gone to plan. The 50mm hole I'd tried to do completely freehand and this had happened. That initial hole was too big and this is going to be messy. I just know it. So the hole was super loose, which is kind of important for the kingpin. For comparison, this is how tight it should have been. But more importantly, when I drilled the longer 28mm hole through the entire beam, I used the laser level trick but missed the mark by a country mile. I don't know what went wrong. The hole was 45mm from one edge and 54mm from the other, nowhere near central and would definitely cause issues with the kingpin alignment. So I had to scrap it and make another, which is why I was obsessing earlier. But the silver lining is that this sacrificial beam did have a couple of nasty shakes running along a corner, so at least it wasn't perfect. In the next part I'll be fixing the oak beams to the steel axle and we'll finally get the turntable spinning. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I've recently been designing a new website for the work jackets that I'm having manufactured. Two years ago I made my first website on Squarespace and I remember the process being effortless. But since then Squarespace have added more features, refined the tools and improved the templates available, making it possible to set up a professional looking website for your business or passion in just an afternoon with almost no prior experience. The process is also just quite fun and creative. If you go to squarespace.com forward slash Carl Rogers, you can start building your site completely free and you'll receive 10% off if and when you decide to go live. You can see for yourself what to expect by going to koto.earth, which is the website I'm building. It might not be live, but it should be in a few days, where you can take a look at the jackets I have for sale and see a sneak peek of where this shepherd's up will eventually live. And once again, apologies for the big gap between part one and part two. However, part three will be coming exactly one week from now and it's a good one. Thanks for watching.